believe that the Sharia will dominate? Do you believe that democracy will come on, under our feet? That we will destroy America? We will destroy Britain? That all of these leaders, they'll be under our feet? You see, that's exactly why they want you under their feet. They don't want you on top. They don't want to be a part. They don't want a big A building block. They need you, Joe Biden and Donald Trump and people in England and all the Western countries that don't believe in their nonsense to be under their feet. So today, ladies and gentlemen, one of our first clips is going to come out of San Francisco, the newest member of San Francisco's election commission. Now, I want to point out that this person is very articulate. You're going to understand every single word that they have to say, and there's going to be nothing odd or strange about this person's interview. So let's check it out. 喺誒兩年前我嚟到三藩市嘅時候咧，咁我就認識咗好多原來三藩市有好多嘅誒、呃、權利嘅喎，好多權利係好多三誒、呃、非公民啊、移民咧都可以享有嘅，包括咧，就算你唔係公民咧，都可以咧去做委員，去誒、呃、影響政策嘅。All right, so you get the point, right? This person is either an illegal immigrant or not a U.S. citizen. They are not a U.S. citizen. I already know that they're not a U.S. citizen, whether they're here illegally or why. It really doesn't matter to me. Why in the world are we allowing somebody from another country who is not a citizen of the United States to run our elections? Are we running out of American citizens to run elections for our own people? It's the craziest thing that when you speak to everybody else、um, and you and you kind of try to explain to them that we're slowly and just being encroached upon as as any invasion would take place. The perspective that this isn't—it's happening worldwide. A lot of Western countries are being taken over by so many other countries. I don't. History repeats itself because I want to point out that even Americans—you know, the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria, the Mayflower—we slowly just immigrated over here and encroached. Whether you believe that's right or wrong, that's a moral issue. I'm telling you as a functional fact that that's what we did. We were displaced from Europe, and we came to North America, even though we knew it was here, for opportunity, and we took over. Now I think white people and black people have a unique linkage to this country, other than other people have. We as Americans, we need to get on board with understanding that this is happening not just here, but it's happening worldwide. So we better become some bastion of reality. The mayor of London is a gigantic proponent of just allowing others, outsiders, people who are not truly assimilated or actually migrated there legally, to take over. He just is. So we're going to check out what he has to say about illegal immigration. I've no hesitation at all. It's saying we need more migrants in London, and let me explain why. So I'm not equivocating. Just be, it's really important to say this why. Park the social benefits to our city from migration. Park the park the cultural benefits to our city from migration. I've spent this morning with some of our city's leading business people who create jobs, wealth, and prosperity. They've got a skills shortage and a labour shortage. Right, where where we've got a pipeline of training up Londoners for future-proof jobs. Even if every single Londoner who's currently not working was to be trained up to do these jobs, we still have massive number of vacancies, record numbers of vacancies in the health sector, in social care sector, in hospitality, in tech, and so forth. And so we need to have a sensible migration policy. And my point to the government is this: if you're worried about migration because it's unpopular in certain parts of the country, if you think you don't need it, and if other parts of the country either don't want it for political reasons, Or don't think they need it. I respect that. Half of our builders are above the age of fifty-five, and so we're trying to train up more builders. We've lost almost half of our EU-born builders in the last seven years. So Brexit has been a disaster for, from that point of view, has it? It's a combination of、uh, the extreme hard Brexit on top of Brexit, but also you, the, the well-reported issues about low birth rates and so forth, and the pipeline of of people coming into uh, uh, the the economy and so forth. So we need migration, sensible migration. So he's basically saying we need to just. They need to influx a bunch of migration because of terrible policies back then. So instead of instead of allowing, you know, well, from our perspective, it would be Americans, but them Londoners and and English people,、uh, 
uh, to negotiate their wages a little bit better because you can negotiate wages. Let there be a little bit of a vacuum inside the, 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 the job market so you, me, and everybody else, you know, we could at least leverage our positions. Now you're just flooding the zone with so many immigrants automatically going to lower wages because there's more people than there are jobs. And instead of and then instead of promoting the idea of not being such degenerates and having such a liberal mindset of sexuality um, and abortions, I mean, you promote abortions. You wonder why your birth rates are so low. It's because we we promoted the idea of abortions and the pill and birth controls. And I get it; you don't want to spread diseases. I do, but at the same time, you fear mongered. Or you planned for it to fearmonger to, to stop the growth of your your own people. You now you have to immigrate people who, let's be honest, they don't like you. They want you destroyed. They want to change you so in depthly. Your fundamental system is going to eventually change. Because even you know, we call America a melting pot. England's a melting pot too, whether they like to admit it or not. But the United States is a melting pot. If you had a melting pot and I threw 10 tons of cornstarch in there, it would stop being a melting pot. Now, wouldn't it? The diversity eventually is going... The majority is going to flip. They're not going to have the same mindset as Americans did where we're like, oh, no, we're good with... You know, at least the vast majority of us are good with equality. They're not. They want dominance. They want superiority. Do you think people who follow Sharia law is going to care about you know, the Constitution, they don't care about those rights. Their moral obligations is to Sharia law, to, to the Quran. The same way a Christian should be to the Bible. They don't care. So if you think that this is a good idea to bring that many people in at one time who have a different mindset or a different loyalty, China, they have a loyalty to China and to that system. You bring so many of them people into the system, it changes the system. Everything has an equal and opposite reaction. So we're going to take a look at another clip from um, the mayor of London. Um, let's see what else nonsense he has to say. Here's the really important point of my short remarks. Yes, we celebrate our diversity and in Islam, we are a very, very diverse religion. But there are some people, there are some people who think diversity is not a strength it is a weakness. They think diversity shouldn't be celebrated, it should be denigrated. They try and pit Muslims versus Hindus. They try and pit those from London versus those from other parts of the country. They try and pit those who are older versus those who are younger. And as the general election approaches, they will try and make these culture wars bigger and bigger. And we've got to say no. We've got to say we're going to build bridges and we're not going to build walls. We've got to show them that Islam celebrates diversity and we celebrate our brothers and sisters whether they're Muslims or they are non-Muslims. And see, that goes back to what I was saying. Um, the diversity is our strength. It's not. Because you think it's just diversity. No, they. that's not what they want. They don't want diversity. They want uniformity. Right? They want you to be uniform under their religion and ideology. You see it all the time. I mean... If you're a builder, if you're building a home, what's stronger? One gigantic piece of wood or a thousand little pieces of wood nailed together? Diversity is not always a strength, especially when that diversity wants to destroy what they're built on. They want to destroy that fundamentalism. We have clips after clips. I'm not sure if uh, YouTube's going to let me show them, but I'm going to show you anyway. We have a, a, a clip of an emir, I believe from Pakistan or Afghanistan, don't get me wrong, don't quote me on it. They basically explain step by step what they want to do. They've been teaching this and been preaching this for decades. So let's take a look at that. Do you believe that the Sharia will dominate? Do you believe that democracy will come on, under our feet? That we will destroy America? We will destroy Britain? That all of these leaders, they'll be under our feet? You see, that's exactly why they want you under their feet. They don't want you on top. They don't want to be a part. They don't want a big A building block. They need you, Joe Biden and Donald Trump and people in England and all the Western countries that don't believe in their nonsense to be 
under their feet. This is probably why we need to start allowing Christians to run the country under Christian rule. Do you believe that? Because if you believe that, I will see it in your actions. When they speak about Sharia, they speak about the Muslims, when they speak about the Jihad, we should be proud to say that we are from the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And whatever you people represent, we will destroy it with our own hands and we will establish Islam over your noses. This is the truth, my dear Muslims. Do you hear what this person is saying? They're basically stating that it doesn't matter what you believe in. It doesn't matter about your laws, it doesn't matter about your customs, it doesn't matter about your culture, it doesn't matter about anything. Their whole job is brought to them by Quran, their God, says they need to dominate and overthrow governments. That's what they're being called to do. Now again, we can debate whether that's moral, incorrect, correct, but from their perspective, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant whether they, th whether we think it's moral or not. It it's irrelevant what we think, because from their perspective, they're doing it on the word of God. From them, from their perspective, it's from a higher power. We have lost our ways in the United States of America. We have forgotten to know how to unite under the flag to fight against this nonsense. So we need to unite under something else. It, sh it sh from my perspective, it should be religion. It should be at least Christianity because, I mean, either way, you know, they're coming. They're here. They're going to enforce their, their religious rule eventually because it's happening day after day after day. You can see it slipping because people have become weak. They, they have no rule to follow. They have no standard to follow for their own lifestyle. There is no road work. For anybody, it used to be integrity and, and justice and, and to serve the public. But now it feels weak. It feels, oh, just do whatever you want to do. Don't they understand that the, the liberals and the Democrats don't understand that they're going to become so weak of this, hey, do whatever you want to do, that people who are strong, who have convictions about these things are going to come in and they're going to do what they want to do. And they're going to do it to you. They're going to do it to me. They're going to do it to everybody else. If we don't have resiliency, they're going to run over us. They're coming for us. Whether we like it or not, they have a view of what we should become. And they don't mind doing it. They have no fear in their heart. They believe that what they're doing is morally correct up to the doors of death. They don't care. I, I don't think anybody gets that in their brains. They don't fully understand the concept, you know, as Americans, we could just fall just like any other country. It's happened before. I hate bringing up the, the example of Rome because Rome got torn apart inside and out and they had a terrible, terrible immigration policy and they did it themselves and we're doing it to ourselves right now. So just, just remember, you're either going to become their servants or their victims. That's what's going to happen. And it's not just them. It, it's anybody of any culture because their their ideologies, their convictions, their loyalties lie somewhere else. At least when you're born here. At least when you grew up here. You know, good, bad, or ugly. You have some kind of conviction and loyalty to this nation. And you believe that, that bringing enough people in here are going to birth enough babies is going to have that same mindset. But if you don't have people to teach them that mindset of, you know, to protect this country with their lives, they're going to give it up. You know, they're not going to understand it's better to die on your feet than to serve on your knees. I, I should have been more aware of this. I should have spoke out earlier. I should have thought about it. Now that I'm older, it's coming out a little bit easier. Hopefully people start coming around to it. Uh, I see more and more people are. Uh, hopefully they don't go to the route of hate. Uh, hopefully they don't do weird racial marches and they, they keep more about a nationalist feel. You know, an American feel. It doesn't matter who what you look like. If you are an American, you are an American. You have to protect this country as an American. And so you see how people around the world are acting just like our people at home. So... I'm Simple Son. I hope you like, you subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.